So the last time we are able to make a request to our register application API, but actually we were not able to insert into the database. So that's because in my database over here, I did not add a password column. So make sure you come over to your MySQL database on the structure, then you can add one column and then you can add your password. I'm just going to clear this and remove this and see that uh, definitely we do not have any error. Once I uh, type, some things again, I'm going to type down some at gmail.com. So someone, and once we hit on the register, down here you can see we are, we are now able to insert into our database. And once ever we insert into our database, it's going to generate a token and send it back to us, which we can assess in the off action. So right here in the register action here, we dispatch a register success for our reducer. And in our reducer, we are going to go over to the auth reducer. You can see the register success is going to accept and also insert our token and also the user sent back by our API. So that's where we stopped off last time. And we are now able to make some couple of requests to insert and also register a new user. Right now, let's make use of the authentication code uh, token, sorry, authentication token that is stored in our assigned storage. The way we can make use of that is to uh, typically make a request whenever the app opens. So I'm just going to come over here. There are some couple of things I'm going to import. I'm going to import from our actions. I'm going to import, I think, this, uh, the store, I guess, the source, store, I think this one fold, uh, let me just do it this way. From, yeah, we have the store actions of actions. We are going to be importing the load user and also we have to assess uh, the error. So let me see uh, what you have to assess for now. So it's definitely called clear errors. Oh, it's not on the same action. No wonder I'm not getting back. I'm going to import it. Uh, let me just copy this down. Bring it inside here called clear errors. Then I'm going to be importing that for our error actions. Error actions. Now we have we also have to bring in our connect, which I have put in at the top. I'm going to connect our app to React Redux. It's going to accept a, an object that's going to load our user and also give us the error. And uh, here we need to pass map state to props. So let's create that map state to props, which is going to accept the state. And then we can register our props. So we can grab uh, the auth state dot auth. And also we can grab the error state dot error then we can pass that map state to post now connect so we have this connected right now we need to make a request whenever the app loads to api slash user slash uh, i think api to the user uh, auth so we are making a request to api slash auth slash user so let me just console log hit so that whenever the request is successful we can see this on our console I'm going to come over to the app itself. Whenever the component did mounts, we have to assess the load user from our props, which is definitely going to make a request for us. So let's check in our console. And uh, we didn't, I didn't see any requests. I didn't see anything happen. Let me close the app and open it again. You can see we have hit which means that we are able to uh, make a request to our uh, backend whenever the app loads. So what, what the API is going to do for us is to make sure that the, the user had a, has a token the user is going to be sending. Uh, let's check in our actions. So right here, whenever the, the user opens the app, it's going to dispatch, let me clear this, it's going to dispatch a, a sorry user loading and this is going to be some kind of spinner icon uh, you can make use of this it's going to be your text 
but it's going to send headers uh, with f star token which is going to be grabbed from our our, our state so from our, our, our reducer itself not from our state because the reducer stores this into our initial state so we can grab that any any way you want to call it either from your state or from your reducer then we need to send that together with uh, everything to this uh, link the api slash auth slash user then if there is uh, a successful request then we need to bring back user loaded which is going to return some couple of values we are going to type down then they pass in the payload to as a rest of data over here all we are going to simply do is to bring in the token is going to come from the request and header so if you remember we use s chart token so we have to check whether this is in the database check whether the id is in the database we have to say select from users where the id then we combine this with our db.query so we can just pass the SQL check and uh, we have to make use of the user.id and as well we have to make sure we get the callback we are going to send back if the user is this, if the length is greater than one because it's going to be an array it's going to return array then we have to return a response.json the first one is the user which is going to be the user zero uh, the first array value which is an object then we have to send the token back so that's exactly what you see here so once this is sent back we we uh, dispatch user loaded and send it back to our reducer to handle some couple of things for us so right now let's kind of refresh but if we have any error we are going to see some console uh things here so this doesn't usually work this way it usually works when the app Loads. So let's close that and open the app again. So you can see we are having an error because the user does not exist and we cannot read the property ID because uh, in the first place we are not able to make a successful request and in our user it got deleted. Check, take for example, uh, whenever we make a request, say user loading is going to try to make a request for us. If the user fails to load, then everything here is going to dispatch, which is login fail or login success or logout success or stuff, which is going to clear everything from our assigned storage. So right now, let's handle that. The way we can handle that uh, is to make sure that the user has a token for the user to be able to make sure, uh, sorry, to, for the user to be able to make a request to API slash auth slash user. Right now, we are going to create a middleware called auth. And we are going to bring that in from slash all slash middleware. So I think I already created that. So it's just a very simple file. Uh, over here, we get the request response and the next, which is going to be allowing you to move to the next middleware if you have, and it's going to check for S chart token. If there's no token, it's going to dispatch, uh, it's going to return a token authorization field. Then if there is one, then it's going to allow you to move on. So let's save that and see. And you can see right here we don't have any error then you can see on our console we are printing out some errors so let's kind of close it up and open it again so whenever you oh we have some some problem here uh we have online 63 uh we are using extra token and also in our auth action extra token then over here on line 63 uh it's trying to get the user id which is not found mm. so let's set this to one uh let as we move on we are going to see how we can uh, manage that effectively uh, let me close the app and open the app again and send it right now it's not going to give us any token so it says an error again but well, here we have uh a 400 bar request uh, that's coming from our middleware 
So you can see here it say no token authorization field. And let's check our message whether well, we can find that. Uh, it is usually best to use the debugging tool. And I can really find it. But it says request field. Oh, sorry. Oh, I, I just messed up some things, guys. Sorry for that. Uh, let's kind of fresh the app. Let's close the app and run this once more. So we have it running now. Uh, same thing, and the error is definitely coming from this place. Or oh, okay, sorry, it's coming from token is not valid, I guess, because we have we have a one user here. So let's kind of log in with the credentials we registered with in order for us to get rid of that error. So sam at gmail.com. I'm going to type down my password, hit on login. So whenever we log in, it's, it's trying to refresh the app and we have a 200 request over here. Uh, let's close the app again and open it because we have a token stored in our storage. So let's try that. Let's see what will happen. Uh, still saying that we have a bad request. So guys, that's how we can really handle this, but I don't really know why it's giving us a very bad request. Uh, we'll find a way we can fix this. Oh, this. So guys, I came across a solution. I actually made a mistake. I was using chat over here. So whenever you're making uh, a request to JWT, you will use XAuth token to make your request. But I, I can't really recall now because it's kind of really long. Like I said, I left this uh, building, this app. But I kind of changed this back to auth, the normal conventional way I usually handle this uh, request. And also I came back here in the auth middle way and changed this to auth. And uh, lastly, I came to my reducer and I got rid of this code. I just commented it out. Although that is a very useful code but for now let's just comment it out then i was able to restart the app and the app was able to make the request with the token given and over here you can see we have a very true or for that means a successful request uh, on our console so let me kind of close this app again and open it so that you can really understand what i did i opened it and i will check my console whenever we check our console you can see we have a very good request on our console 304 request and that's how we can handle this uh middleware using middleware to make sure that the user has a token and then we can now use the token to verify the user over the jwt server and get the id of the user and use the id of the user to query our database and get back the response we need so that we can make use of this response on our website or sorry on our application also, this is applicable when you are using your React web. So that's it. That's how we can definitely make a request. So back in our app.js, we want to assess the values of the requested user from our loading scene. So we are going to pass the values, the auth and the error as a prop. I will come over here and pass the auth and also pass the error if there is any error. I'm going to go over to the loading scene and there are some couple of things we are going to make. Uh, it says it can't find that. So what you just have to do is come here, use the structuring, get the error and from the error and the auth from these dot props. So that will solve it. So guys, I, so right now let's head over to our loading scene. So in our loading scene, we have the default animate scene. Uh, actually, we can't make use of the uh, props that we passed over here, but uh, in case you are good with uh, Flux routing, maybe you can. You want to handle it from your router, it's, it's, it's up to you. But for now, let's handle it from our animate scene. So what we want to actually do is in our animate scene, whenever the, before the animation start, we want to grab a user from our storage. So we can just use uh, json.pass we need to pass 
then we can make use of the assigned storage. Then we have to get the item called the user at user. Uh, assign storage dot get item user. So this assign storage is we imported it at the top here. So as I was typing down, it just uh, came up. Then I hit the enter. What was the problem? It says dot get item. I think uh, something is wrong here. So dot get item. And let's refresh. Uh, it couldn't work. Why? Uh, const user json dot pass. Then we have to get from assign storage dot get item. We have to get a user. Uh, let's see. Uh, it says oh, wait. Oh, sorry, it's because we need to pass a sign over here. So that will solve it. So we don't have any error. Now, what we want to do next is to make sure that the user, check whether the user is already authenticated uh, through the load user request. If the user is not authenticated, then the user will, will be redirected to the auth scene. But in the case that the user is authenticated, after this is successful, we want to redirect the user to the chat room. So we are pretty coming to the end of this series. I will just come down here. So what I will just do is uh, after this, a callback, we need to replace this totally and get rid of this. Uh, for here, we need to say if user, if there is any user, all you just have to do is to take me to the chat room else take me to the old scene so let's save that and see what's going to happen uh, let's close this up again and open it so we can see it right now it's going to redirect us to the chat room uh, we don't have any error uh, the user itself is it gotten let me kind of console the one user I don't even know why we are having a lot of a lot of delays let's wait again to see uh, that definitely means that we are not able to assess the value of the user so I needed to review the application and after review, we are able to now move on. So you can see that we are in the chat room. How we came about that is whenever the user loads, is going to store the user in with assigned storage, and we are able to assess that from our uh, component mouse over here. Then we need to make sure there is a user. Then if there is a user, we need to come to the chat room, and then if there is no user, we need to come to the auth. So the next uh, video, we are going to now link uh, the chat room itself. And that will be the final uh, video. No matter how long it's going to take, I'm going to make sure I finish it. So thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the like button and as well the subscribe button.